Welcome back to Bearcat Update. I'm your host, John Walker, and fall sports are still going strong here at Northwest, and in my opinion, thankfully so is now the fall weather. This week we have another show jam-packed with sports for you guys, and to kick things off, we're going to switch it up a little bit and take a look at volleyball's two games they played Friday and Saturday. The Cats came into the weekend moving up in the AVCA rankings to number 10, a program best. On Friday, the women took on Fort Hayes State and swept the floor at the Tigers in three sets, allowing the Tigers to only score nine points in the third set. Our reporter Dylan Johnson is going to break down Saturday's game against Nebraska Kearney. Dylan. Saturday afternoon, your Bearcat volleyball team battled the fourth ranked team in the nation, Nebraska Kearney. To start things off, Maddie Aaron set up Rachel Sturdivant for the kill. Sturdivant had a game high with 55 assists on the evening. Unfortunately, the Cats lost the first set 20-25. During the second match, the Bearcats tried to even the matches with smart play, agility, and hustle after being down early 6-3. Junior Hallie Sidney led the Bearcats with 17 of their total 66 kills. Nebraska Kearney would not go away easy as the Bearcats won set 2, 33-31. Match points went back and forth during set 3. The Cats kept it close during the entire match in hopes of pulling away with the lead. Nebraska Kearney's Anna Squires and Julianne Jackson tallied 18 kills apiece scoring more than 19 points each as the Cats lost set 3, 20-25. The Cats came up short in set four after the match-winning block by Nebraska Kearney's Anna Squires and Sammy Mock. The final score was 20-25 as the Cats fall three sets to one and take their second loss on the season. Reporting for Bearcat Update, I'm Dylan Johnson. Thanks, Dylan. Our reporter Sydney Garner caught up with Coach Worth after the game to hear her thoughts on how they can use this game to move forward for the rest of the season. Sydney. I mean, what can we learn from it? You know, from the standpoint of every single loss, every single match, you can always learn. Um, but what can we learn from this? And then our whole entire focus is how can we be better at the end of the year? That's really where we want to be our best. And so this is a test. We didn't do very well with it. But how can we step back, um, figure out how we can be better in those areas that we were weak in? So next time we're in a situation like this, we can, we can turn it around and we can have the win instead of the loss. Thanks, Sydney. The volleyball team will be back in action at home on October 11th as they take on Central Oklahoma. We're going to take a quick break, but stick around. We've got more Northwest sports coming up as you're watching Bearcat Update on KWT Channel 8. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Bearcat Update. Up next on Walk the Line, our analyst Jenny James was able to interview senior men's basketball player Ryan Welty. Jenny. Thanks, John. This week on Walk the Line, we are actually sitting because Ryan Welty is literally a foot taller than me. <laughs> but we are joined by Ryan Welty. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So kind of going off of all that momentum you guys had last year, winning another national championship, how are you taking those steps to prepare for this upcoming season? So right now, uh, I mean, we forgot about it. It's a new season, new year. So right now we're, we're lifting a few times a week and we're, we're getting uh, about three hours of practice in a week up, up until uh, October 15th. So we're just getting better every day. We're going back to the basics, you know, working on defensive stuff and offensive stuff. So just going back to the basics. You have Duke coming up in a few weeks. You got to experience that the last time, but I guess what are you looking forward to, to traveling there and just playing Duke? <laughs> yeah, so they do a really good job hosting us. Um, they, they fly us out there. Um, we stay at a nice hotel and everything. And honestly, just playing at Cameron North Stadium with all the history and all the, the really talented players that have played there is always really cool. And obviously playing against guys that you know will be in the, the NBA. Um, so like two years ago, when we went there, they had probably have five or six guys in the NBA now. So just being able to say, hey, I played against them, um, and gave, them gave them a game. So, yeah, it's, it's cool to say that. Do you think that also helps kind of bring the momentum into, like, the start of your guys' regular season? 
Yeah, I think it definitely helps. Obviously, playing another game against guys that are that talented, that will definitely help going against uh, Division Two teams that will play during the regular season. So, honestly, they'll be by far the best team we'll play this year. They're super talented, got a bunch of really, really good guys. So, um, they'll definitely help. So. Okay, so you're seen kind of as a veteran on the team now, um, had a bunch of new recruits come in. How do you take on that leadership role of helping those younger kids kind of get used to the team? Yeah, so it's, it's a little weird thinking that I'm a veteran. Now. It's flown by so far. So, yeah, um, just helping them out in practice, being, you know, talking to them, helping them out with just being in certain spots on offense, on defense, stuff like that, and just encouraging them I think is the biggest thing, especially for young guys just coming in. It's kind of a tough transition with the speed of the game and the physicality. So just helping them, encouraging them, um, just doing that. I think that's the best I can do. So Losing a guy like Joey Wittes, but what are you kind of seeing from those younger guys and the guys that maybe are stepping up? Yeah, obviously losing Joey, uh, I mean, he was All-American. He was really good. But, I mean, we'll have guys like Hawkins. He'll step up. Tyler Doherty, Kirk, Derek Lang, those guys will step up. And even... These three or four newcomers that we have coming in, um, they've all done a really good job in practice so far, and I think they'll they'll be able to contribute, if not now, down the road especially. So, you mentioned you guys kind of flushed away last year. You kind of moving on from the national championship, but what are you trying to achieve again this year? I mean, we want we want to win it all again. I mean, I think us seniors to go out on top that would be awesome. Um, to win three out of the last four would be amazing. So obviously we just want to get better each and every day and just take it one game at a time. But the end goal obviously is always to win a national championship. We cannot wait to see what you guys accomplish this year. And shout out, October 26th today is the day before my birthday. So you guys got to go uh, win okay, dude, for my you. birthday. Okay. We'll yeah. try our best. We'll try our best. <laughs> that is all the time we have. Ryan, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We're going to take a quick break, but stick around. We have more to come on Bearcat Update. Welcome back to Bearcat Update. The football team traveled to Emporia State on Saturday in search of their fifth straight win to start the season. Cats fought hard, and after falling behind early in the game, they were able to push forward and come up with the win. And you already know that we were there to catch the highlights. All right, here we go, guys. The Cats found themselves in a familiar situation where they were against Week 2 in Washburn. This time when Dalton Cohen connected with Cole Shoemaker for a 24-yard score to put Emporia up. But a punt set up the Cats' defense to get that safety right there. But Emporia would not stop their strong first-half performance. You see this touchdown run right here on the speed option. That would eventually put Emporia up to take a 17-12 lead into the break. Here it is, second play from scrimmage out of the locker rooms. And 57 of Braden Wright, 87 passing yards on the day, come from that connection to Imani Donadell. That marks Donadell's third straight game with a touchdown. Emporia made a late run in the game, eventually taking a 23-19 lead right there on that pass, but it was all cats from that point on. After this touchdown from Hohensee to Marcus Andrews, a mirage of field goals headlined by a 53-yarder from Parker Sampson was enough to keep the cats unblemished. That win puts the cats at an unblemished 5-0 on the season and puts them in great position heading into a big matchup. As speaking of that, the football team will be back in action this Saturday when they take on undefeated Pitt State in Kansas City and Arrowhead Stadium for the Fall Classic. As always, you can check on my Twitter for updates throughout the week and live highlights on Saturday. The men and women's cross-country teams competed in the Chili Pepper Open in Fayetteville, Arkansas this past weekend. The men's team placed seventh overall with Jordan Cope leading the way, breaking the Northwest 8K record with a time of 23.57. The women's team came in 45th place with Keeley Danielson placing 45th individually and leading the women with a time of 19.30. Cross-country teams will be back in action on Saturday for the Lewis crossover. The women's soccer team was able to come away with some improvement to their overall record last weekend. They kicked off the weekend on Friday with a win against Washburn 1-0 in overtime with freshman Caitlin Case scoring the lone goal for the Cats. On Sunday, the team was unable to finish out the weekend with a win and fell to Emporia State. 
The Cats will be back in action next weekend against Nebraska Kearney as they take a little break from traveling and get their next four games at home. Before we close out this week's episode of Bearcat Update, as always for you guys, I have my top pick of the week. And guys, my pick of this week is the Northwest Cross Country Team, specifically the men's side. You heard a little bit ago, junior Jordan Cope found a way to break the all-time Northwest 8,000 meter record. Sheesh. Along with that, the meet consisted of teams of all levels of the NCAA, Division I, Division II, everything. The men managed to come away with their seventh place finish and that's pretty impressive. Last Wednesday, the men were pegged as the number three team in their regional rankings, giving them their best midseason ranking in program history. It'll be interesting to see where they end up after a strong showing against some of the best teams in the country when the rankings are released for this week. For those reasons and many more, the Northwest Cross Country team, specifically the men, are my pick of the week. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Bearcat Update. For all updates, you can follow us on Twitter at BearcatUpdate underscore 8 or watch all of our previous episodes on YouTube at KNWT8. Thanks for watching and have a great night. hey -o, What is up, guys? For last week's episode, make sure to click up here and for all of our previous episodes, click down here. See you next week.